Ladies and gentlemen, the treble booster. I'm gonna vote it the most underrated guitar effect pedal of all time. Why? Well, not that many people talk about them, and it was the Dallas Rangemaster treble booster as well as a couple other brands, but mainly the Rangemaster, that was able to transform the guitar tones of everybody from Rory Gallagher to Brian May, Richie Blackmore, Tony Iommi, Judas Priest, the list goes on. Basically, without the help of the treble booster, the tones would have been flat, lifeless, and just lying there. But incorporated into their tone, when they used a Dallas Rangemaster or other similar treble booster, it took their guitar tones from a flat, lifeless, low-gain, wooly, kind of mucky thing, similar to this. Uninspiring and just kind of not so good. Over the top into something more akin to this. And the next thing that happened was countless, countless great songs and riffs were born. So I find treble boosters kind of infinitely fascinating. They were essentially like a band-aid sort of effect. They were trying to solve a problem really with the amplifiers of the day that couldn't be solved by, you know, adjusting the controls on the amp itself. I'm gonna read right off the uh, Rangemaster uh, Wikipedia page, which is incidentally a pretty cool resource. I'll, I'll include the link in the video description down below. But it says, uh, the Dallas Rangemaster treble booster was an effect unit made for guitarists in the 1960s. Its function was twofold, to increase the signal strength of the guitar going into the amplifier, and to increase tones at the high end of the spectrum, a treble booster. The need for treble booster arose in the 60s uh, as British tube amps such as the Vox AC30 or Marshall JTM45 tended to produce a slightly dark, muddy sound when overdriven, particularly when used with humbucking pickups. A preamplifier that also boosted treble proved a solution. And here's where things really get interesting. Additionally, the vintage components in the Range Master circuitry could add characteristic distortion and overtones to color the guitar sound, much in the way of more modern overdrive pedals that kind of exist today. So that's where things really get interesting. It was kind of an imperfect solution to a problem with the amplifiers of the day, and it was actually introducing distortion into the circuit. And lo and behold, look what was born. So much great rock and roll out of kind of a happy accident. The incredible blues rock guitar player Rory Gallagher was an early adopter and user of the Rangemaster treble booster. He'd plug it into a battered box AC30 with his battered 61 Strat and get an amazing guitar sound. Now, Brian May from Queen, perhaps the most famous user of the Rangemaster treble booster, but here's Brian actually giving Rory full credit for giving him the idea for using the treble boost. But he was incredibly patient. He was packing up his own gear. That's the kind of man he was. He was packing up his guitar and his amp and everything. And he had the grace to speak to us. He didn't go, get out of here. What are you boys doing in here? He, and I said, how do you get the sound? What is it? And he said, oh, it's very simple, but I have this guitar and I have this little, I have this amp, AC30 amp, which is like nothing else. And I have this little treble booster, little Range Master treble booster. And, and that's where the sound comes from. So I went straight out and got the, the AC30 and the, and the treble booster and my own homemade guitar thinking, I wonder if this is gonna work. But basically it did. As soon as I plugged in, I went to a place called Take 5 in Warder Street, not far from the marquee, and found a battered old AC30, which was for sale for 50 quid, I think. Plugged a, a Range Master treble booster into it with my guitar, and it gave me what I wanted. It made the guitar speak. So it was Rory that gave me my sound. And that's the sound I still have. That's, that's my voice. So I have so much to... to um, to be thankful to Rory too, for. Brian Maytone recipe. Here I have a Red Special style guitar um, and what I'm going to do here for this test is use these two pickups in series which is what Brian did about 80% of the time supposedly and that makes for kind of like a humbucker sort of sound where one's feeding into the other. It's a powerful sound and it's a little bit dark with the guitar turned all the way up on 10 
But Brian's a big volume control guy, always was, and so rolling that volume down kind of cleans things up. The amplifier, um, I've got on 10 right now. Okay, so AC30, normal channel from about 1963, I think, this amplifier. Original speakers and the whole nine yards. The speakers sound a little, like, broken in for sure, maybe too broken in on this amplifier. They're a little on the woolly side almost, but um, but this is an amazing amplifier. So essentially you just got normal channel on 10 right now. And if I start bringing up the guitar volume, it sounds like this. vibrating back there pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's it's loud. It's not incredibly loud, I don't think. But, um, you know, 30 watts on 10. But you can hear how dark and woolly it is. It's not really a usable tone for rock and roll. If I turned the guitar all the way up and tried to play some Queen... So anyway, the song I was just playing, Tie Your Mother Down, the tone formula supposedly is you bring the volume on the guitar up to about two or three, and then we're gonna hit the treble booster. Okay, so the Cornish treble booster over here on my desk, um, I've got the two channel Cornish, and you know, supposedly this is the version of the treble booster that, that he made for Brian uh, to tour with in the 70s. And I think Brian, what he would do is have one on 10 all the time, and then the other one maybe vary a little bit. There's a marking on this one I have here on about six that belongs to John Shanks. I don't know if John put that marking on there or not, but anyway, it sounds really good like that with the first one on 10 and the other one on 6, and you can kind of hit it for solos and stuff. So I'm just going to play a little bit so you guys can hear what this does. I'll bring the guitar up to about 2 or 3 on the volume, and then turn on the treble boost. Glenn Tipton uh, Judas Priest style tones here for a second. Now I got my old SG out and I plugged into the, uh, the bass channel or normal channel on my old 71 4 input Marshall, exactly like Glenn would have used. An old 4 input Marshall, just like that, probably from that era. Um, and uh, I've got the amp on about 5, and I want to show you what it sounds like uh, without anything else going on. Just the guitar into the amp, no pedals on. <laughs> You know, it's just way too woolly and dark um, to be usable, really, right, for that type of sound. So, um, you know, obviously they needed the treble booster uh, to get uh, the amp cooking and, and sound like, you know, heavy metal or, you know, hard rock, so that's for sure. So I got three treble boosters hooked up here, and um, in the track that you heard me play, uh, I was using the Color Boost from 65. It sounded really good to me, um, but they all sound good, actually, and can get us in the ballpark for this Judas Priest, Judas Priest Glenn Tipton style tone. So let's try the Color Boost first. So once again, here's the guitar uh, with no pedal, and then I'll turn on the pedal, and you can hear how much it all of a sudden we're right there into that kind of Glenn Tipton style treble boosted tone. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, let's check out what the constellation sounds like for this sound now. Also really cool sounding. It doesn't have quite as much gain or push, but I like the, the frequency it's kind of boosting at. It's really cool. They're all a little different. They all sound a little different. Uh, the Dyna Ranger from Divided by 13. I don't know. Oh, pretty. Got a little bit of noise going on here for some reason. They're unpredictable, these pedals, with their germanium transistors and stuff like that. But the, uh, the Dyna Ranger has this sub octave thing that happens for some reason on the low string that's pretty cool. I don't know if you guys hear it. It's almost like a little ghosting or something that's going on. It's really cool. So a couple of these treble boosters have kind of a tone control on them that basically lets more bass into the signal, I think. Um, both the Color Boost and the Dyna Ranger have this. And um, for definitely for, I would say, the Brian May style tones and also for the Judas Priest tones and stuff, you want the least amount of bass as possible. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like when you start adding uh, more bass back in. <laughs> That's the color boost with the bass control kind of in the middle. And then on the Dyna Ranger. Sort of their version of the same thing. And you might say to yourself, geez, that sounds woolly, but so what's that good for? Well, it's perfect for this. Thanks for watching my video on treble boosters. I think the most underrated effect of all time. I mean, when you think about it, they were essentially a band-aid created to smack on the front end of a, a, a crappy sounding tone in order to make it better. And lo and behold, some of the greatest rock and roll of all time uh, resulted. And, and certainly it was uh, uh, part of the genesis of heavy metal and hard rock, definitely. Uh, you know, uh, I, my hope is that a, a young guitar player today might take an effect like this and stick it in front of a, a not so good sounding, maybe crappy sounding amplifier or something and the light bulb will come on and maybe they'll write some of the, you know, cool rock riffs of the future. That'd be a cool thing, I think. So check out a treble booster if you've never tried one. They're a hell of a lot of fun, I think. Please hit subscribe if you haven't. Hit the thumbs up if you dug the video. Hit the little bell beside the subscribe button if you don't mind. You'll get an alert every time I put out a new video. And hey, I am Pete Thorne. Come back and see me for more videos real soon. All right, take it easy.